Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. It is finally time for my 2023 eyeshadow palette collection and declutter. I have so many palettes to go through. I'm super excited to just hone in on the things that I love, the things that I maybe don't need to keep anymore for whatever reason. I'm really excited to share this with you. The full collection and declutter series for this year is officially complete, so if you wanna see the other aspects of my collection, you can check out my other videos. I do have a makeup collection and declutter playlist as well. And if any of these palettes happen to catch your eye today, I do have all of my discount codes in my description box, so you can always check and see if I have a code with any of these specific brands, help you save some money, and I appreciate it so, so much if you use it. Before we get into into it, I did of course film this look. I film every look you see on my channel. It should already be up on my channel by the time this video goes up. It's from my recent reading wrap up, Get Ready With Me. And then as far as like my accessory details, I'm not really wearing jewelry today, but this is a CC brand beanie and this is a wig from Amazon. And then of course, just a couple little housekeeping things before we get into the actual declutter. Number one, please don't get offended if I declutter your favorite eyeshadow palette. I am so happy that it's your favorite. I truly am, that makes me thrilled that you love it more than I do. It, we just like different things and that's okay. It's no reason to get mad. Number two, please don't ask me to send you anything. I feel weird and icky giving used makeup to people I don't know. I give dibs to my friends and family. I donate what I'm able to and I toss what is past its point of no return. <laughs> and lastly, please do not feel pressure to declutter your collection if that is not what you need in your life. It's just what I need in mine. I like to do this reset at the end of every year. It makes me feel just renewed and refreshed and ready to start anew. So yeah, without further ado, it's time for the feature length film of this year's eyeshadow palette collection and declutter. All right, friends, we're here. <laughs> it is time for my 2023 eyeshadow palette collection and declutter. I have many a thing to talk about today, many an eyeshadow palette, and I'm actually really looking forward to this. I think it's time for a purge a new beginning, <laughs> if you will. Um, I feel like I could declutter so much today, but who knows, maybe I'll end up decluttering five things. Who's to say? Um, I am gonna try my best to be as strict as possible in the sense of if I truly don't think I'm ever gonna use it again, it needs to go. If I'm not gonna use it for comparison purposes, it needs to go. If it's just taking up space, it needs to go, you know? If I haven't used it in who knows how long, it probably needs to go. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into it. How many am I starting with? I wrote it down. 252, provided I counted correctly. We have 252 today. Man, I remember that when there was a time when I was like, I never want more than 100. Like 100 seemed like such a crazy amount of eyeshadow palettes, which it is, um, but now like, I just have so many and I try so many things and things are so good and I don't wanna get rid of things. So I'm not gonna to try to dwindle it down to 100 is what I'm trying to say. Maybe if I could get closer to like 175, I would feel very satisfied, but we're just, we're gonna see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna get into it. Um, before we do though, uh, I will get questions on this nail polish because it's enchanting. This is House of Hades by Mooncat. Isn't it wonderful? And then these two cute rings are from Ana Luisa. I love them. So let's uh, dive in. We're going in no particular order. I'm just gonna grab stacks. We're gonna go by brand. And then at the end, I will give you my totals, obviously. All right, let's start it off with Blend Bunny. Um, first is the Trove Quad. This came out alongside the Lure palette. Um, it looks like this, it's like multi-chromes. You can kind of see the shifts in that mirror, actually. You can kind of see how they like change. It's so cool. Um, these are beautiful. And I like that she did these separately because these are really expensive multi-chromes and she put them separate from the palette so that if you didn't want to spend the money on multi-chromes, you didn't have to, you could buy them separately. Um, but this is amazing. By the way, I'm keeping all of these, no questions asked. This is the all done up. It's beautiful kind of grungy neutrals. These shimmers at the bottom are so beautiful and sparkly. Blend Bunny just gets better with every release. And then this is the Lure palette. This one is like a mermaid dream. Again, beautiful, beautiful shimmers. This is the one that the Trove Quad came out alongside of. It's stunning. This is definitely one of my favorites. It might be my second favorite. It's definitely in the top three. Oh, the Sugar and Grunge. This one is so fun. This one came out I think in like September or October. It's so freaking cute. I love these like dusty kind of pastels. I love the shimmers. I think it's so cute. Machina palette. This one just 
just got to me. Like I haven't even swatched this yet. It's so brand new. This just came in the mail for me like last night, but my video with this will already be on my channel by the time this video goes up. Um, it's so pretty. So cool. I like these weird tones. I'm about it for sure. The dollhouse palette. This is such a cutie. This one's like, I don't know, just like really pretty kind of grungy garden vibes. That's how I describe it. This one is so cute. It's like neutrals with a twist. Ah, the blends palette. This is the one that started it all. This was the brand's first palette. Uh, my yellow is broken. I, I can I can see that. <laughs> um, but this is just your all mattes range. You got every color of the rainbow. This is what started it all. We have the gradient effect and everything else from this point has just been kind of I feel like adding on to this concept, adding more undertones, adding more colors, adding more weirdness and uniqueness, and I love it. They just have such a killer matte formula. Um, the primal specifically, this one is discontinued, unfortunately, um, but this was meant to specifically fill in the gaps of the blends palette. I think she discontinued this because it was just like her least like bought palette, like people weren't as interested in this one, but I thought this one was so pretty, especially like these blues and purples, so, cute and the shimmers are really cool in here as well the surge was my personal first palette from the brand i love this i'm so sad that it's it's either already discontinued or getting discontinued just because her manufacturer for these neons um these can't be made anymore so i hope to see a, a resurgence if you will one day especially like maybe a surge palette with better shimmers because these shimmers were good but the shimmer she does now is kind of like unbeatable <laughs> so i would love to see her eventually kind of redo the surge palette with better shimmers. I think that would be such a cool idea. Um, but I love just the mixture of the dusty grungy with the neon. It's just such a cool vibe. The Sickly Sweets, this one is so fun. This was kind of her first time doing more of a chaotic color story as far as like the layout goes. It's not in that gradient order, which made people so mad. I personally don't really care either way. I think it's fine. Um, I think it's fun. I like the kind of weird pastel with pops of depth vibe. I think it's really cool. So blend bunny first round of palettes down many more to go. All right, next up we have Ace Bute. Um, there are definitely some palettes in here that I don't need. Um, first are these little travel palettes they came out with. Uh, the Cala palette is kind of just like a neutral vibe. The Begonia is my favorite of these little travel palettes. Kind of like grungy garden-esque. The Fleur is a monochromatic purple palette. And then the Flora is a yellow palette. Kind of more like sunflowery. I like the mixture of like the orangey browns with the yellows. I think it's super cute. Um, I think the formulas in all of these are really good. I really like Ace Bute. I liked them before they reformulated a few years ago and I like them now. I like them even more now. Um, but I definitely don't think I need the Cala and the Fleur palette. I'm just like not a neutral person and I don't really like just need another monochromatic purple palette. So I think I can let both of these go. I think I will keep the Begonia and the Flora for now though. I think these ones are fun. Ah, uh, the Aura and Envy. These are some of my favorites they've done, honestly. Um, the Envy's super cool. It's kind of like blue, green vibes. I think it's so cool. Yes, I broke Karma, unfortunately, <laughs> but it's fine. And then Aura is beautiful. I love this like purple, red, yellow. I think it's such a cool color story. I'm definitely keeping these. Um, and the Classical Paradise, I don't think I could ever let go of. It's just like an autumnal dream. Like I love this every time autumn hits. Like, I mean, I love this year round. Like it's good grungy colors, but this is autumn in a palette. It's so pretty. And this is their old formula and I still love it. Oh, the ambiance palette. This one is so fun. I think it's so cute, grungy, also kind of autumnal. I like these shimmers a lot. And I think these uh, colors are all just super cool. I really like this, this weird dingy yellow with this orangey yellow. It's, oh, I love. The Oceanic palette. I think this is their old formula too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but just a fun blue green vibe. I love a blue green color story. I'm such a sucker for it. And this one's no exception. Gotta have it. Oh, tropical vibes. I think this is my number one favorite from the brand. It's just so cool. I love these weird dingy colors, the pops of like teal and like weird orange and yellow. I could eat this up, it's so good. The Flare was my original favorite ever from this brand. I loved this dearly. I thought this was so cool. I thought this was the perfect combination of like bright meets grungy. And I still think this is a really cool color story. So I wanna keep this one around as well. The Nostalgia Palette, this one's so 
cute, very bright, punchy, kind of tropical. I think this one is really, really fun. I think this was actually their first palette with the new formula before they like went back and reformulated some old ones. Um, super good. And the Palettopoly, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I think I decluttered this last year and I might have plucked this one out of the declutter pile. Um, I don't do that very often. I think this was the only palette I did to last year. It's like, you know, I stand by that decision because I think this is a really fun color story. It's chaotic and weird. I like the weird undertones. I like the different shimmers in here. I think the Palettopoly game was kind of like gimmicky, you know? I mean, that was kind of the point it was just to be a gimmick because like, you can just do palette bingo. Just look up a random number generator for free on Google and just randomly generate your shades. You don't need a whole like card game to do that for you. Um, but yeah, you know, I stand by it. I'm gonna keep it. Let's do my glam light ones next. Um, I have the Crazy in Love Chucky palette. This came out during like Valentine's season this past year. And I still think this one's super cool. Kind of smoky, grungy. I, I like the vibes. I do like these kinds of tones when I wanna do something kind of sultry, romantic. I think it's really cool. And then I have my Michaela palettes. I have the original Michaela palette right here. Really, really enjoyed this when it first came out. I thought it was fun. I don't really care about that whole top row, but everything else was pretty fun. And then we have the pot two. Oh, I forgot there was like sparkles in the cover. Um, kind of just like blue, green, purple vibes. And like, I still think these are really nice palettes quality wise, but I don't know. I just don't really feel compelled to reach for these in the slightest. And I feel like they're just gonna continue collecting dust if I keep them around. Like I don't really have any use for these. Um, so I think I'm gonna give these ones to a friend. Lethal Cosmetics. Here are all of my Lethal palettes. I actually have one more on the way. Their newest palette, they've already revealed it. I think it's already launched and they have sent it to me. I don't have it as of the moment that I'm filming this. I might have it by the time this video goes up. So who knows, either a video's already up with it or it's coming soon. Um, but let's talk about what I do physically have right now. Uh, this is the Teresa's Lethal palette. This was actually the second collab. Teresa is dead in Lethal Cosmetics did. So cute. I love kind of these weird alien vibes. I love this color story. I think it's so unique. Um, and then this was the original Teresa is dead. Lethal cosmetics collab. Lethal is dead. Um, super cute kind of based on like horror tropes and old school horror. It's so cute. I love Teresa with my whole heart. Like we're friends in real life and everything. And um, I love these palettes. So I'm going to keep them. Ah, uh, the metamorphosis palette. So pretty. I really, really like the vibes in here. Very warm and smoky. Oh, it's delicious. Um, this is the night flower. Is that what it's called? Night flower? Wild flower? Something about a flower. <laughs> I think this one's the wild flower. This one came out during springtime. Kind of weird pastels. I like the different like inky indigos in the mix. So super cute. Um, the evergreen is like probably my favorite they've ever done. I think this is gorgeous. I love the rich greens and the blues and the purple. Oh my gosh, this palette, this is a good one. I think the shimmers are unreal. This one I think is the night flower. I might be mixing names up. Lethal doesn't put their names on the palette itself, um, but it looks like this. This one might also be my favorite. It's either this or the evergreen. I just love these cool tones together. I love these different purples. I love all the different shimmers. I think this one is to die for. This one is the After Dark palette, I believe. This was my favorite for a while. I was obsessed with this palette. I think it's so good. It doesn't look like I've used it as much as I have, but I've dug into this so many times. I think Lethal Shadows, they just don't really like show very easy when you use them. Um, but I thought this was such a cool palette and I still wanna keep it around. I don't know, I have such a soft spot in my heart for this. I love this. I got this, I wanna say winter of either 2019 or 2020. It was like a Christmas present and I, I still love it. Alongside the Velvet Desk, this was also a gift at the same time. And I think it's so cute, grungy, dark, but still kind of whimsical. I think it's such a cool palette. Um, and then we have the One Up and the Two Up palettes. These ones are kind of the, the wild cards. <laughs> the One Up palette looks like this. It's like an arcade and then it like opens up like a controller. And while I think this is cool, I think the colors are fun. The matte specifically, I believe, are UV reactive under like blacklight. Um, and I think the shimmers are nice. 
I don't really think I need this one personally, especially because some of the shades that are in here are also in the evergreen palette because they launched these as singles and then turned some of those singles into a palette. So now you can get some of the shades in here. I'm rambling, but I don't think I need this one. It's also kind of like awkward to store. I hate funky shaped palettes. Like just give me a regular rectangle, please and thank you. And then the two up palette, this one just really wasn't my favorite. Um, formula wise, it's fine. Like I enjoy Lethal's formula, but there was something about this one that just kind of had me like not really interested. Like I used it once and it was fine. But then I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> I'm kind of over it now. So yeah, that's that's the two up. I think I can let go of these two. I'm not really like obsessed with them. So I'm gonna let these go. Next up, Bella Beauty Bar. Bella Beauty Bar has become one of my favorite brands. I think they're coming out with really cool color stories. They've really stepped up their matte formula and it's amazing. Their shimmers are always amazing. Um, they have some really, really cool things. I definitely think I have like one or two things in this mix that I can maybe let go of. Um, but most of these I am absolutely obsessed with. Uh, the Basic Witch is probably my favorite the brand has ever done. I just think it's so cool. I love this color story and I will continue saying it. If you missed out on the original Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette that was limited edition years ago and you want it, um, I think this would be a good alternative. And honestly, the shimmers are outstanding in this one. So I, I think this would be a great, <laughs> Uh, replacement for that palette. It's so good. Um, not to say that I'm going to declutter my moon spell because you can pry that out of my cold dead hands. That's at least a decor piece. Um, but if you miss that palette, this one exists and I think it's amazing. The strange and unusual. This one is so cute. I actually have the version that launched, I believe last year where the mats weren't quite as amazing as they are now. They were still good. I still loved this palette. It was still one of my favorites. Um, but they have since reformulated this palette to have the better mattes. So if you buy it now, you're going to have the better version. Um, but I think this is amazing. I love a Beetlejuice color story. It's one of my favorites. Oh, the recently de-influenced. They really came through with the like spooky palettes this year with Basic Witch and recently de-influenced. This one is so cool. I love these rich jewel tone vampy vibes. I think this one is so so much fun. I am absolutely obsessed with it. One of my top favorites of the year. The Angles of Illumination, not Angels. <laughs> the amount of us that called this the Angels of Illumination when this first came out. <laughs> Angles of Illumination. This is a fully shimmer palette. These are beautiful. They're outstanding. However, I just don't think to reach for this. There's literally nothing wrong with this palette. I think it's amazing. And if you love shimmers, you would love this. I just, I don't know. I went through a period where I hated all shimmer palettes. It was not my thing. And then I went through another period where I was like, okay, I really understand the point of all shimmer palettes. Like they're so pretty to add on. You can do one and done quick eyeshadow looks, just glitzy, glimmery. And now I'm kind of in that period again where I'm like, I don't hate all shimmer palettes, but I just don't think to reach for them. I have so many singles. I have so many beautiful shimmers throughout my palettes that like pulling out a specifically all shimmer palette just isn't really my vibe right now. So I think I'm gonna give this one to a friend. This is the Celestial Garden from M. Jones and Bella Beauty Bar. M. Jones actually recently launched her brand, which I'll talk about her eyeshadow palette in a minute, but this was her collab with Bella Beauty Bar. And it's nice. We have a mixture of mattes, beautiful shimmers, and then split pan cake liners. Um, this was during the period where the mattes weren't as good and I feel like for this palette, I specifically would be reaching into this one for either the shimmers or the liners. And similar to this palette over here, I just have so many other things that I, I think I'm just gonna think to reach for first. I don't mind this palette. And again, even when their shimmer formula wasn't top notch like it is now, um, it still wasn't bad. Like I still enjoyed it. I think this was the first palette I ever tried from the brand and I really enjoyed it, but I don't think I need to keep this particular one anymore. The sun and the sea. Uh, this one is kind of our coastal beachy palette. We have the, the warm sandy browns, the mixtures of blues and purples. And I do like this one. Don't get me wrong. I think it's really pretty. I think the shimmers are gorgeous. Don't care about these browns at all. Like these toasty warm browns, no thank you. So much prefer cool tones when it comes to neutrals. Um, this one I think I can just live without. Like there's beautiful shimmers in here, but I have so many beautiful shimmers throughout other Bella Beauty Bar palettes that this one I think I can pass on. The Bejeweled palette, this one's fairly new from the brand. This one is insane. Like this is gonna be one of my top favorites for sure. Um, just a jewel toned, rich, delicious masterpiece. I love all the shifty shimmers and multi-chromes that are in here. 
This is such a cool palette. I love it so much. Now we got the big boys. This is the pastel garden palette. Looks like this. It is ginormous, but honestly, it's a really good pastel palette, guys. Like this one is just like top notch. I feel like there's so many really good different undertones, such a good gradient. The shimmers in here are unreal. I really, really like this one. I'm not usually a big fan of giant palettes, but I don't know, things like the Blend Bunny palettes and like this one are like such an exception because they're so exceptional. <laughs> such a good pastel palette. Next we have Smoky Glam, and honestly, I feel so similar. Like, do I need this? No, <laughs> but do I love it? Yes, and again, I do love just kind of these grungy, cooler tones. I like these vampy vibes. I love the shimmers that are in here. Like I can totally see using this for like glamorous reasons, you know, because I don't really have that many glamorous leaning things. I don't play with a lot of neutral leaning things. So this is gonna come in handy so much for those times. I really, really was impressed with this. And finally, we have the best mattes collab between Ellie Star, Brittany Huffman, and Bella Beauty Bar. This is an all matte magnetic palette. <laughs> we have every color of the rainbow. I actually rearranged mine to suit, I think, Brittany Huffman's video from forever ago. I'm sure both of them have rearranged their palettes a hundred times. Um, I love the quality of this. I think these mattes are amazing. This was from when they like beefed up their mattes. They're so good. Um, but I'm keeping this for another reason as well. Not only just because I think the quality is good, but because these are going to be amazing when I do build your own palette videos, which I haven't done a lot lately but I wanna get back into it. Um, these are insane and I love that they are magnetic. So I have so many options for build your own palettes. Like it's the perfect palette for that. All right, let's uh, move on now to, let's do Ensley Rain next. That's what's right here. Um, I only have four palettes from the brand so far and they are quickly becoming one of my favorite brands. I think they're so good. I am keeping all four of these, so we're just gonna run through them. This is the Flower Moon. This came out during the springtime, but I only recently acquired it back in like September, I believe. It's so pretty, these grungy garden vibes. Yes, please. The Harvest Moon's my favorite out of this bunch. Like, are you kidding me? These tones are unreal. I love these autumnal grungy vibes, absolutely. The quality in these are just so good. The shimmers are insane. The mattes are so blendable. This is the Twisted Tea Party. Super fun. I love that it matches like the colors on like the cover on the inside flaps so nicely. Oh, it's so pretty. I love that this is like just weird grungy tones meets bright colors. It's so cool. And then the most recent one is this one, The Lands of Enchantment. This is a wintry pastel wonderland in my eyes. This is magical and amazing. And I love it. Like this is definitely a close second favorite behind the Harvest Moon. I have the most precarious pile of palettes next to me. If I drop them, I'm gonna cry. Um, let's move on. I don't even know where to go next. Where do we go from here? All right, next up, let's talk Game Beauty. This is our gaming themed makeup brand. I really enjoy them. This one is the Adventure palette right here. Kind of a, a fun green vibe. There is a pressed glitter in here. Thankfully the brand started not doing that after this first release. Um, but super cute. Oh, this like brings back memories when this first launched actually. This one is the Harbinger palette. It looks like this. Kind of like spooky, dark vibes. Looks like that. I think I am keeping all of these by the way, just cause I think they're really cool. I think there's only been one palette so far out of like these specific palettes that are like this shape that I wasn't obsessed with. Actually, I kind of wasn't obsessed with this one to be honest with you, the cyberpunk. I think it's cool, but I don't know, the formulas weren't like as outstanding for me. Like in the other ones, they have these really cool marbled ones that didn't exist in here. Oh, I don't know. No, I do like this one. I think it's fun. Yeah, I'll keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I was just bitter that there wasn't a marbled shade, but because there wasn't one formula that I enjoy doesn't mean the whole palette was bad. Oh, um, and then this is the fantasy palette. This one's super cute, kind of whimsical. Winter meets spring in my eyes. I think it's super cool. Like see this, this marbled shadow? It's so cool. They apply on the eyes so nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep those four. I think the only one of these I haven't kept was the Victory. It was just too neutral for me. We have these Elementals palettes, which some of these I definitely don't need to keep. Like two of them I haven't even used. I only swatched. So this is the Pyro. I think this one's really, really pretty. Like I like this kind of corally vibe. 
but I didn't even end up using this one. I just didn't have time to get around to it. So I think I'm gonna let this one go to a friend. Same with the Geo. I think this one's a really cool vibe as well. I like these kind of earthy vibes, even though I'm not a neutral person, I think this was done really well. But again, I didn't really get around to using this one on my eyes and I don't know if I will. So I'm gonna give this one to a friend. Now this one I did use, the Cryo. This one's super cool, very wintry, very fun. Um, but if I'm being honest with myself, I don't really need just like an icy blue monochromatic palette. It's just not something I like have to have in my collection. So I think I can let this one go as well. I like their more unique color stories more. But these two I will keep. These ones were amazing. This is the Dendro. Even though it's like a green palette, it's not just like strictly monochromatic. So we have the greens, we have the blues, we have the yellow. We have a really cool multi-chrome in here, actually two. I think this one's a multi-chrome and this one, and then this is just a really cool shimmer. Um, so love that. They might be duochromes, I don't remember. They're shifty nonetheless. Um, and then we have the Electro palette. This is the other one I wanna keep. And even though again, this is just like monochromatic purple, I think this was monochromatic purple done so well. I love this multi-chrome down here. I love that we have a mixture of cool tone and warm tone purples. It's so unbelievably fun. And then we have the Phantom Thieves collaboration palettes. We have the actual Phantom Thieves palette. This one is named after the different um, characters in the game. I actually started playing the game because of this collection. I need to get around to finishing that actually. Maybe I'll pick that up again soon. Um, but this one's super cute, kind of like just brights. It's fun. And then the Metaverse palette I actually really enjoy too. I think it's kind of like a weird color story. I like these kind of dusty tones. This one's based on like different locations in the game. Um, super cool. I think I'm gonna keep these ones also. Let's move on now to Kyla, formerly known as Musée Beauty. This brand actually doesn't exist anymore. Unfortunately, they closed down, I believe end of last year. Um, I think the owners just wanted to do other things. They didn't wanna be tied down to a makeup brand anymore. Um, I don't think I'm gonna keep these. I think they're a really cool brand. I think their concepts were really cool, but I just don't see myself reaching for these again. If I was a regular person just doing makeup for fun, it would be a different story, but I am doing makeup on camera for you guys all the time. Like I literally don't do my makeup without filming unless I'm on a trip. Um, and there are certain things that I'll keep that are discontinued that don't exist anymore, but these specifically, I just don't even see myself using in my free time. Um, so I'll just go over them really quick. This was the Honoré palette. Oh, super cute. Kind of like romantic garden. The Le Jardin was very springy garden vibes. So super cute. This was the volume two. Actually, they came out with an original one that was similar. Uh, Triumph of Venus. I really like this one. Super cool, super unique. And then the Van Gogh is my favorite out of these. Just kind of like these grungy tones. I think they were doing really cool things with their brand, but I don't think I need to hang on to these. I will miss the brand, but off to new things. I still have a few kicking from Menagerie. I decluttered a lot of them over the years just because some of them were getting kind of old. They were things I weren't reaching for anymore, but um, these are the ones I still have. So we have the Sugar High. Looks like this, kind of like bright. I really, really enjoy the shimmers in here, actually. I think they're really well done. Um, the Whale Song, I don't know if I could ever get rid of. This just holds such a special place in my heart back when indie brands were coming out with blue-green palettes left and right. I love this one. And then the Feral was my first palette, I believe, from the brand. So super cool. And I think I still wanna keep all three of these. I don't know. These hold like a special place in my heart. I love them. All right, Creature Cosmetics Labs. I have three palettes from the brand. And honestly, this just is not the brand for me. And it sucks because I love spooky things. I love Halloween vibes. But not only are the, the packagings just so impractical for me, these are so annoying to store. Um, the formulas just aren't it for me. They're not that great. I gotta be honest with you. This is the best one out of the three I've tried. This is the Trick or Treat palette. Looks like this. I feel like the formula in here is better than the other two, but it's still nothing so groundbreaking. And like, I wanna keep this just for the sake of keeping it because it's cute, but I don't know. It's also annoying and I hate dealing with storing it. So I'm gonna let this one go to a friend. Same with Sleepaway Camp. This one kind of like all comes off completely. Um, this one annoys me too, because it's like just a rainbow palette. <laughs> like there's nothing remotely exciting about this one. At least the trick or treat one like fit the theme really well. This one's just a rainbow palette and it makes me mad. This was one of my least favorite palettes I've tried, unfortunately. And the reanimator. Again, this one at least like matches the vibe really well, but I don't know. 
I don't love that there's a glitter in here. The shimmers are very satiny, like they are not super shimmery. It's just not my formula. I need something with more punch, so I'm gonna let these three go. All right, we got Unearthly. We've got more Unearthly and more Unearthly. <laughs> I have so many Unearthly palettes, holy cow. I love Unearthly as a brand. I think they're so super cool. Um, they are also sending their newest palette to me as well. I'm blanking on the name at the top of my head. It's something wintry. It's kind of like a mauve vibe. It's super cute. It's on its way to me. I don't have it yet as of the moment that I'm filming this. Again, I might have it by the time this video goes up. Who knows? But I definitely have some palettes in this mix that I don't need. So I'm going to declutter this down a little bit. Um, let's see, let's start here in the dark. Ooh, this one's still super cute. I really like this one. Very grungy winter. I'm a fan. Oh, the Fall Magic is new and it's beautiful. This is like the remastered Fall Magic. She came out with a Fall Magic a long time ago, but this is the remastered. These shimmers are insane. These mattes are incredible. I am in love. Like whatever she's doing right now, like especially with this format of palette, I hope she sticks with this because it's so good. Same with the Sorceress Smoke. This is one of my favorite palettes I've tried this year. And it's just amazing. I love these dingy green colors. Again, the shimmers are incredible in here. I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing a great job with it. Um, I feel similarly to this. She like remastered the Don't Be Jelly into more of like a, like a palette palette because before it was an all shimmer palette, I'll get to that. They're honestly so different. I don't even know why she called this one Don't Be Jelly. She should have just named this something else, but either way. I think this is so cool. I love this layout of a palette from her. I think the shimmers are incredible and these mattes are so fun. I am a big fan. And then we also have the Surrender palette. This one also matches that kind of long vibe. This came, I think, in the Valentine's mystery box earlier this year. And I think this one's super cute. I like the reds and the pinks and like the dingy mustard in there. I think this one's a fun color story. I do think the shimmers are better in the newer palettes. Like these shimmers were fine, but the newer ones are like unstoppable. Um, but I still really like this one, so I'll keep it. And now we have some more. <laughs> this is the Vitality. <sighs> Let's see. You know, it was a struggle between this and Palladopoly last year. And I think I ended up decluttering Palladopoly, regretting it, undecluttering it. And then I don't think I thought about this one once. Even though they're not the same palette at all. They're just chaotic colorful color stories. They're literally not the same palette, um, just similar size. I haven't really thought about this one, so I think I can let this one go. Ooh, the Hauntingly Glamorous with Sydney Nicole Adams. I still think this is super cute. I love a spooky color story. I like what they did with this. I'm a fan, I'm gonna keep it. Ooh, the Leather and Lace is a good one. This one's really good. Kind of like just a, a gradient of like grungy greens, grungy oranges, grungy purples. We have like the dark light mid with the shimmer. I think this one's good too. Ooh, the Dead of Night. This one's also like grungy winter vibes to me. Look how pretty that is. I think this one's super, super cute. Again, I'm definitely loving the layout of the rectangle palette she's doing now, but this was a really good palette. I think I'm gonna keep it. Now these two, this one's funny because I loved these palettes. Like these were some of my top favorite ones last year. But like I was saying earlier with the angles of illumination, I just don't really reach for all shimmer palettes anymore. This is the All I Ever Wanted. This is the All I Ever Wanted Volume 2. I think these are really, really cool, but I just have a feeling these just aren't gonna get used the way I want them to. So I'm gonna let these ones go. I'm gonna give them to a friend. Oh, this is the Resurgence. This was the collab with Heather Austin. Look how cute. She is beauty, she is grace, she is wonderful. The shimmers are insane, the mattes are so cool. I think this is such a cool color story. Heather did an amazing job. Okay, so this is the original Don't Be Jelly. Just like a little all shimmer nine pan. I thought this was so cool when I first got it, but now I just kind of don't really care. So I'm gonna let this one go to a friend. Oh, the Not Normal palette, cute. I have the newer version where the pans are a little bit smaller. Um, and this is still one of my favorite color stories from the brand, so I definitely wanna keep this one. This one, I feel like I remember waffling back and forth between keep or not keep last year, and then I ended up keeping it, and now I don't really care about it. <laughs> I, that sounds mean, but it's just not one that I felt compelled to reach for. There's just other palettes from the brand that I'm more excited about, so I'm gonna let this one go as well. Give me glow. I love Give Me Glow. I haven't bought a new palette in a while though. I just, I don't know. I feel like they keep releasing things at inconvenient times for me. <laughs> things are just like not going well at certain times when they launch something new. So I haven't gotten anything new lately. I think the only thing that might be new is maybe this one down here at the bottom, but this might've been last year. 
I don't even remember. Um, but let's go through them. I don't know what I'm keeping. I don't know what I'm deleting. We're gonna find out. Uh, this is the Juicy Olive, just like a little monochromatic, grungy olive six pan. I just love this one. I can't let this one go. This one's too cute. The Christmas morning, tis the season. <laughs> this is just like perfect for this time of year. It's so fun, so Christmassy. The shimmers are just insane. I love their metallics. The Vintage Rose is such a fun time. Such a cute, grungy garden. I love, I've used this so many times. Nightlife, I think I might've gotten earlier this year. Maybe again, this was last year. I have no concept. Um, this is fine. It's just like singles compiled into a palette. I don't really have a problem with it other than the fact that I wish there was one more shimmer, but I am gonna keep this mostly for the purposes of build your own palette videos because they're all magnetic. They're right here. They're good colors. I actually reach for Give Me Glow mattes a lot for build your own palettes because they are magnetic. Um, I'll keep this one. The Haunted Pumpkin is so cool. Look how cute. I love like the weird turquoise with the sagey greens with the rusty oranges. This is such a cool vibe. I really enjoy it. And the Vivid Rose is kind of like the, the weird peppy sister to the, <laughs> to the Vintage Rose. This one's very bright and loud, very pinky purple. I love the cool tone mauve shades. I really like this shade here. I think that's a really unique inky color. You don't see that a whole lot. Um, this one's super fun. The Pastel Dreams is a really good pastel palette. We have like equal matte to shimmer ratio. We have just what you need. We have lavender, blue, like creamsicle orange, the baby pink. Like we have the staple pastel colors in a very simple matte to shimmer ratio. Really, really enjoy it. Bad Witch Club is my favorite from the brand. I've broken it, unfortunately, though. Um, but this one's really, really cool. I really enjoy just the all the different colors that are going on in here. I like the, the weird peachy corals. I like the very periwinkle blues, the bright purples, the greens. This one's so much fun. And then we have the two moods palette. This one's kind of like a double palette. Like you have like two sides in here. And yes, I've broken this one too. <laughs> you drop a palette the wrong way and the mat shatters and that's the worst. It's so much easier to squish a shimmer back into place. But yeah, we have kind of two different vibes going on. You could also kind of break it up into little quads. I think this is a cool palette. I'm not mad that I bought it. I think the, the shimmers are really, really glittery in here and really pretty but I don't know if I need this one. I might have not been thinking about my tastes in makeup when I bought this one because I just don't reach for stuff like this very often. And initially I thought this would be a great palette to travel with because I can also use so many of these as a blush, but there's no way I'm ever traveling with this because I broke a shade. Um, too fragile to travel. <laughs> so I think, I, I think I'm just gonna give this one to a friend. I just don't see myself really reaching for this one, unfortunately. It was fun for a moment and, and now that moment's passed. Oh, Kaleidos. I have such a bone to pick with this brand. They have like deleted every good thing they've ever done. And it's, it's, it's so sad. I almost forgot one. Um, they have discontinued basically every good thing. And it makes me really sad. I feel like they've moved to strictly just these boring quads and pale blushes. And I'm very sad to see it because they were a really cool brand for a long time. They were literally one of my top favorite brands of all time. And now no, not so much, but I do have some things that I'm gonna keep forever. Most of these I'm keeping forever just because these were really cool and I stand by that. Um, the Flower Punk I think is still my favorite from the brand. Like what a cool color story. I lost my marbles when they announced this. I think it's so super fun, but pretty sure they discontinued it, unfortunately. This one I can let go of. This is the, I don't even know what it's called, but it's the black and gray smoky quad. I kept this one last year just because I was like, oh, what a great like smoky quad. Do you know how many times in my life that I'm like, you know what I need right now? A smoky quad, never. I haven't reached for this one time. Like the silver's really cool, but I have other silvers throughout my collection. Um, the black gray gradient is nice, but I can grab these in other aspects of my collection. Like I just don't need this, so deleting that one. This was the collab with Angie forever ago, the Club Nebula palette. This was a super cool palette. I think she did such a great job with it. And I plan on keeping this until further notice. I think it's a really cool palette. And then we have the Futurism palettes. I am so bitter that they like officially announced that they like are discontinuing all of these. Like they're not doing them anymore. And I hate it because this is where they started. Like they started with these three first ones and then they just didn't keep it going. And I don't know why. Like. I mean, I guess they just weren't being purchased enough. Like that would be my guess. But in my mind, these were like the peak part of the brand, but 
Alas, I'm not gonna drone on. I'm keeping all of these forever and always. This is the sci-fi green. This one's the cyber bronze. This is probably my least favorite, but I don't know, I can't let it go, especially because I was just saying I can get other silvers other places. So <laughs> there you have it. This one is the astro pink. Super fun. Honestly, Astro Pink is such a funny name for this. Like in retrospect, there's barely any pink in here. Like we have a weird like bright pink matte and then like a champagne-y shimmer, but like it's mostly not pink. VR Neon, this one's so cute. I love the shimmers in here and those bright neon pops. So freaking fun. This is the Electro Turquoise. This probably is still my favorite out of all the Futurism palettes. This one's just so cool. I love the bright poppin' turquoises. The two shimmers in here are unreal how glittery they are. And I really like that bright orange in the mix. It's such a fun combo. Lunar Lavender is also a favorite from this mix. I just love these different purples. And again, those shimmers that are in here, they are so shifty and beautiful. I live for them. And last we have the Sashimi City, which isn't one that I would typically care about because it's kind of like neutral pink vibes, but something about it is so beautiful. Those shimmers are just insane. And I will remain bitter that they stopped doing those. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's do Nomad next. Oh goodness, Nomad. <laughs> this stack is getting too big. <laughs> they launch so many palettes. I need to break this in half. We won't have room to see anything. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna keep all of these unless I go through these and I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of forgot about this one. Then maybe I could get rid of it. Um, honestly, I could probably get rid of this whole Christmas one. This was the, the Santa's Village palette. It's like cute if you want just like rich, bold shades and some toppers, but it's not really something I'm like reaching for. I think it's cute for what it is, but it's not something I need. So I can let that one go. The Whistler Snow Lodge is so cute. This one I think got discontinued, unfortunately, but it's one of my favorites. It's so pretty. I love it. The America's Parks. This one's super cute. Kind of like colorful, earthy. I really like the marbled shimmers in here too. Yeah, I think I have to keep it. The Fée de Provence. This is such a cute springy palette. This one's getting discontinued as well, unfortunately, because I think it's so fun. Oh, yeah, I have to keep that one too. <laughs> I really don't see myself decluttering any of these. They do such a good job like 99% of the time. Um, this is the Royal Europe kind of like jewel tone, multi-chromes, really, really pretty. I think this was their first go at multi-chromes too, and they did a really good job. The Okavango Safari, this is kind of like weird, dingy neutrals with pops of green. I really like this one. I think it's really unique and cool. Ah, oh, the Hudson Valley. This is a perfect like autumnal palette. How fun. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, the Iceland Fire and Ice. This is one of my top favorites as well. Look how beautiful. I love just the warmth with the cool tones. So super pretty. Um, this is the Tokyo Harajuku. This was my first palette ever from the brand, actually. Pastels, toppers. I'll be honest with you, this one is not my favorite anymore. Like the pastels are fine, but I just like, this is not the first thing I'm gonna reach for for pastels. And the toppers at the bottom are still really, really good. Like they are amazing. They've held up so well. And I feel like they were honestly before their time because there weren't a lot of things like that then, but there's a lot of things like this now. But I don't know. I just hold so much love for this palette. I don't think I can let it go. The Cartagena Magica. This is very like brights, <laughs> oranges and yellows. I think this one's super cute. Huh. But now that I'm thinking about it, like, how much do I really need this one? Because there's definitely some shades in here I don't use. Like this whole row down here, I don't care about. They're so pale. Huh. You know, this one's really fun and punchy, but I think I can let this one go. I just don't realistically see myself using this one again. Ghost Town USA. Look how fun. <laughs> this was their spooky palette for this year. And it's so cute. Kind of like dingy, dusty. Blues, greens, neutrals. This is a cool vibe. Next is the Haunted Europe. This was last year's spooky palette. And I love it. I think it's so good. Like I always say this half is my spooky graveyard and this half is my like little pumpkin patch. Um, it's very cute. I really enjoy it. Nomad has just really good formulas. I feel like their mattes build up and blend out really nicely, very beginner friendly, but they're also just like really pigmented and you can build them up however you want. And the shimmers are outstanding. Um, this is the Verona Love and Death palette. It's kind of like a double-sided palette. So we have the death side and the love side, or you could pair them together. Um, so super cute. I personally really liked this one. I heard some people had some complaints with the shimmers on this one, but I personally didn't really have an issue with it. So I'm gonna keep it. This is the Paradise Islands palette. 
looks like this. Super colorful. I love the rich greens and turquoises in here. And I love that row of like corals and pinks on the top. I think that one's really, really fun. And then this is the Monteverde Cloud Forest. Very like colorful jungle. It's so cute. Noma just does such a great job. They're one of my favorite brands for a reason. I have some palettes from Gourmet Girls. Um, I really, really like this brand, but I definitely have some palettes in this mix that I'm not really reaching for. I have some that I care about more than others. Um, the Ethereal palette, this is just in that all shimmer palette situation right now that I just don't really care about or vibe with. So I'm gonna give this one to a friend. It's really pretty though. Their formulas are outstanding. This is the Warriors Wear Pink palette in collaboration with Siri Soto, who I wasn't aware of before this collab, but I think um, they did a really good job with this together. I love the pink, purple, red vibe. I love the pop of turquoise in there. I just, this isn't really one that I'm thinking about. And I think I'd rather just give this one to a friend where it'll get used more. Cause I think it's a really well done palette and I want it to get the love that it deserves. The Radioactive, this is just another all shimmer situation. So even though it's beautiful, the formulas are good. I'm just not reaching for it. So I'll give it to a friend. This is the Secret Grove. This one's super cute. They came out with it recently. I like these kind of like grungy garden vibes. I like the pops of shimmer that are in here. I really enjoy this one. I wanna keep this one. And then we have the three collaborations with with doodles by the bunny these are their ultimate palettes in my opinion unbeatable this is the haunted i think this is their most recent palette this one is the nightshade this one's kind of like their poisony plant vibe and then the spooked was their original one from last year just quintessential halloween vibes so super cute i'm keeping all of those i have some palettes from wicked widow beauty and i do plan on keeping all of these because they're really good and i've been really impressed with the brand um, this is the Twisted Tea Party. I think it's so super cute. I like these colors a lot. And then we have the Graveyard Smash. I kind of hope they keep doing more of these like little eight pans. I think they're really, really cute. I like that they're capturing just such a, a fun color story in few shades. Um, this is the Scissor Hands 2 palette. Um, I love this. Very wintry, spooky, cutesy, gardeny. Love it. And then this is their newest palette, the resurrection i always want to call this the resurgence like my brain reads this word and i think resurgence but no it's resurrection <laughs> um very stained glass vibes and even though i don't typically feel the need to collect rainbow palettes this one just did something so different like there's grungy tones in here and dingy shades and the shimmers in here are all truly so outstanding they're all really shifty and pretty um, so I want to keep this one too. I have some from Alter Ego. Um, this is the Goddess palette. This is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Gold, I believe. I've had this for years. I always keep this every declutter just because there's something about it that's so pretty to me. I really like the different shimmers in here. But I feel like at this point in my life, like if I want to play with like teals and grungy, if I want to play with teals and browns, I can do that anywhere else. And I specifically like the mustard in here. Like I don't even like most of the browns. I feel like I'm mostly keeping this just because the shimmers are pretty, but I have pretty shimmers in other places. So I think it's time to let this one go. The Sakura palette is a dupe for the, oh, I forget what it's called, the retro, the retro palette. And I think this is a cool vibe, but my bone to pick with the newest Alter Ego palettes, which I understand is supposed to be representative of Natasha Denona because Natasha Denona does it as well. There's like these creamy shades in here, like this one, like this is a matte, but it's like a cream and it will never, show up as dark as it does in the pan on my eyeball. And it bothers me. I wish they would just do standard mattes. That's what they did in the Goddess palette. That was like one of their first palettes they released. So I don't know. I have such a bone to pick when they use that creamy shade. So I don't really want this. And then this is the Coastal palette. This is a dupe for the Huda Beauty. Oh, I forget what it's called. Something from Huda Beauty. I'm so sorry that I'm blanking. It's not really a brand I keep up with. I think the shimmers in here are insane. I think they're really, really good. I think the mattes in here performed really well. We do have this weird Petri dish shade, <laughs> which I know is also in the Huda Beauty palette. It's like a weird jelly texture. I don't know. Part of me wants to keep this because the shimmers really are pretty, but like realistically knowing me and my makeup style and my makeup taste, how often am I actually gonna reach for this? Probably not often. So I think I'll, I'll let these go. I didn't realize I was decluttering all of my Alter Ego palettes. I really dwindled it down last year. I don't know, they're a brand where like, if it comes into me at the right time, I like to showcase it for you so you have this option as an affordable option. But for me keeping it long-term, it's slim, unfortunately. I wish they would play on more colorful color stories. I would also love to see them 
try doing their own color story instead of just duping a vibe. I would love to see that. I have a few from Beauty Bay. I really like Beauty Bay's formulas, but man, the last like, I think two years, I just haven't really cared about anything they've launched. Um, this is the Earthy palette. It's like a full green palette. It's really, really cute. I like those tones. And then the Midnight palette is like very, like blue purple vibes. It's so fun. Very, very cute. The Age of Opulence looks like this. Also blue purple vibes, but I actually really like the neutrals in here. And I know I was just talking about how I'm not a neutral person, but something about these neutrals is really pretty. And this could be something I wanna dip into if I ever do wanna play with more glamorous neutrals alongside some color. I think this is a good option. But that begs the question, do I need both of these? They're not the same by any means. They're different tones. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them both, why not? And then the Wilderness is my favorite. I wish they would bring this one back because it's really, really cool. Very rich, grungy, colorful, love the shimmers. Formulas are insane. I have some Salem cosmetic ones we could talk about. I have these two. They're like Buffy the Vampire Slayer themed. We have the Perfect Happiness, which is a really cute kind of bluey with a pop of pink color story. And then we have the Love is Blood kind of warm, sunrisey vibes. This is the Grunge Life. This one's super cute. This is newer for them. I think this is a really pretty like grungy holiday palette in my opinion, it's so cute. Uh, Salem and the Witch. They actually remastered this recently and like made a lot of the shimmers better, which I appreciate because I actually decluttered the original last year, but now I don't want to declutter it because I think they did a really good job. And then the Forest Heart is probably my favorite still. Oh no, we have a crushed one. Let me just smoosh it back into place. That'll work, we just won't travel with her. Um, but this is in collaboration with uh, Smink Barrow End on Instagram. I think these three I wanna keep. These two, I just frankly, I didn't even know what the color story was. I had a feeling based on what the packaging looks like, but I didn't like remember it super vividly in my brain. So I'm gonna give these to a friend, but I'm gonna keep these three. I'm very impressed with them. Geology Cosmetics. They came out with the Pilbara palette a few years ago, and then this is the Wheat Belt palette. This is an Australian brand. I gotta be honest, I don't know why they felt the need to make one such a big boy. Um, but this is the Pilbara palette, very like, kind of autumnal grungy. I was really impressed with the color story, like really nice mattes, really metallic shimmers. And then the Wheat Belt palette looks like this. Very bright, I really like this color story a lot. But I gotta be honest with myself, I don't really find myself reaching for these. I think the formulas are really good and I think the color story is really cute. They're just not a brand that's on the forefront of my mind right now. Maybe that'll change in the future. But as of this moment, I think I'm just gonna give these to a friend. I'd rather them get used. Again, I don't really have a problem with these. I have nothing negative to say. If you like these color stories, I'd recommend them. Um, but I don't want them just sitting on my shelf gathering dust either. Shroud Cosmetics, one of my favorite brands. Obviously, I have a couple collaborations with them. Um, obviously, I'm not decluttering anything from this mix. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. This is the Halloween. This was my second collab with the brand. My, my spooky Halloween-y vibe. I will love her forever and ever and ever. This was my first collab with the brand, the It's Freaking Bats. I'm still like forever obsessed. I still think this is like the coolest color story. I'm so proud of it. This still makes me so incredibly happy. I will love these for till the end of time. The Moonfall is so cute. She turned her original Moonfall singles into a full palette and added some extra shades. And I think this is so beautiful. Like one of my favorites for this year, it's gorgeous. We have the Creepy Cute and the Creepy Cute too. The Creepy Cute looks like this. I have a newer one actually. My old one was like old, old. Like it was destroyed. I used it so many times, but this is such a cute OG pastel palette. And then the Creepy Cute too came out last year. It's kind of like the, the, the sister to it. And just adds some extra shades, some weirdness. I love them. The Divinity is so old at this point. This is back when the brand was Strobe Cosmetics. My goodness. I love this palette. It just holds so many fond memories. Ugh. But you know what? I've had this for so many years, like probably five or six years. And like, not to say that it's gone bad by any means, it's fine. But I also just know Shroud has like really stepped up their formulas since these days. And don't get me wrong, this was a good palette when it came out. Um, but I never find myself wanting to actually use this palette. I think I'm gonna let this one go. I think it's time. Never thought I'd see the day. This is the Peaches and Dreams. This is their palette they came out with over the springtime and it's so cute. I love these pops of color, very springy. And these shimmers are insane. They're so sparkly and shifty. 
I am forever obsessed. And the Arcana palette. I think this was actually the first palette the brand came out with under the Shroud Cosmetics name. Um, but it's so cute. I love this witchy color story. I think this one is a lot of fun. I think it's so much fun. Um, and now my piles next to me have grown to a, a scary height again. So I'm going to clear that off and then we will continue. We are, we're getting through it. I think we're probably two thirds of the way done if I had to guess. All right, I'm back. I ended up taking a little lunch break because <laughs> I've been here for a hundred years. Um, but Lunar Beauty, we have first the Siren Sunset. This is the newest palette. I love it. I'm honestly so glad I bought it because I really like these cool tone browns with these pops of color. I think it's a really good mixture. Um, of course, we have the Moonspell in Moonspell Volume 2. Here's the original Moonspell, where unfortunately Prue is broken. <laughs> but again, I will keep this forever, even just as a decor piece, because this is so beautiful, looking like a book. And we have the Moonspell Volume 2. This one's more of our like pink, purple, red vibe. It's so pretty. I really like Lunar Beauty's formulas too. The brand is doing a really good job. Um, this is the Eternal Eclipse, kind of like a smoky blue situation. It's really, really pretty. And then we have Strawberry Dream. This one's so super cute. I love these punchy pops of color. Unfortunately, it no longer smells like strawberries. It smelled like strawberries for a really long time. I don't think it really lasts years and years, but. That was Lunar Beauty, keeping all of those. Let's move on to Lois Cosmetics. Is this brand even doing stuff anymore? I feel like I need to look it up. I haven't seen anything from them since this launch, which was like last spring. Oh, how funny. Their most recent post is of my eyeball <laughs> from February 3rd. Wow. Maybe this brand just isn't a thing anymore. I mean, that doesn't do anything to sway my decision either way. I just realized I hadn't heard from them in a while. Um, but I have the Meet Me at Midnight and the Meet Me in the Underworld palette. Um, this was before it's time coming out before Taylor Swift's Midnight's and kind of hitting the vibe. Oh, I still do really like this one. I think it's really, really pretty still. And then we have the, the Meet Me in the Underworld. This is like a Orpheus and Euricity kind of vibe. Super, super cool. I really, really like this color sword. I really like their formulas too. I think their metallics are nice. Their mattes are good. I want to keep these and I'm holding out hope that the brand isn't done forever. If you know anything about this, let me sound like a news reporter. If you see something, say something. All right, cosmic brushes. I have three palettes. I will have five. <laughs> I have the winter one and the gothic one on their way to me as I speak. Again, I don't have them right now, but I might have them by the time this video goes up. Um, but the Muse palette looks like this. So pretty. This is my favorite of the three. I think the winter one might end up beating this one out though, but we'll see when I play with it. But this is the Muse. Um, this is the Serenity. I was so late buying this one um, and it fortunately it broke. Half of my blue shade broke, but it's okay. I still have half of it <laughs> and a really dirty palette. Um, and then the Delicious Delights. This is their pastel one. This one's super cute. Um, but these are all a really nice formula. The mattes perform really well. The shimmers are really metallic and glossy on the lids. I'm, I'm a fan of this brand and I'm excited to try my two new palettes that are coming my way. Oh my gosh, I just realized I missed this unearthly one, the Daily Grind. It's really cute, but I literally forgot this existed. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I think I waffled about this one last year too during the declutter and I didn't end up using it at all. I forgot about it, frankly, so I'm gonna let this one go too. Next up, we have Fantasy Cosmetica. I adore this brand. I think they're doing such cool things and I'm keeping all of these for sure. Um, this is the Warlock palette. Super bright. I'm calling this my grungy Skittles palette. <laughs> um, this is the Rogue palette. This is their old packaging. Everything now reflects more of the stained glass, but I have some old palettes still. Um, but this is the Rogue, kind of like bluey vibes. Um, the Bard palette is our very like autumnal palette. I really, really like this one. Their formulas are just so good. Like right out the get go, like this was their first palette, the Druid. And this is still my favorite palette they've done. Like right from the start, their shimmers were amazing and their mattes were rich and pigmented. And they're just doing such cool things with their color stories. This is the Fighter. This is their most recent one, aside from the Lost Library collection, but that was singles. Um, but it looks like this, kind of like metals kind of vibes. Like, I don't even want to call this a neutral palette, but I guess it is, but it's like more based on metals in my opinion. And then last we have the Sorcerer palette. This is like our bluey pink. Very, very cute. I love these. Next up, Melt Cosmetics. As you can tell, I have quite the variety of melt palettes. I love almost every melt product I've tried. Formula wise, I always like the melt palettes, but there are a couple melt palettes in here just 
color story wise that I thought I was gonna love more than I ended up loving. But most of these I'm gonna keep because I'm a big Melt fan. Um, first being the Christmas Town and Halloween Town palettes. These are their recent ones. Um, Christmas Town looks like this. Super, super cute. I love the topper shades in here. And then the Halloween Town one looks like this. Beautiful. I am obsessed. The Mary Jane is kind of a cool tone, smoky situation. And if you know me at all, you know if I'm gonna play with neutrals, it's gonna be cool tone, so. Love that one. Millennial Pinks, this one got so much hate, but I love this one. I think it's such a good combination of like dusty millennial pink with like these weird slate bluey grays. The Muerte, forever a favorite. And they recently brought this back. I could not believe it, but it came back. It was also on like super sale over Black Friday. Did anyone pick it up? It's still one of my absolute favorites, like in my whole collection, not even just from Melt. We have the Gemini and the Gemini 2, the OG Gemini. This was my first palette from the brand. It's still one of my top favorite palettes in my whole collection. It's so good. The Gemini 2 is like a really cute kind of grungy garden. It kind of pairs with that Gemini really well. Pairs with that original Gemini really well. This is the 420 palette. It's so pretty. It's like bright, but grungy, very autumnal. Very up my alley. The Electrip palette. Now this is one of the ones where I bought it, I used it, formula wise it's fine, but color story wise I just truly don't feel inspired to use this one again. I kind of regret this purchase if I'm being honest with you, but I don't know, I guess I was just like, ooh, new melt palette, I gotta have it, but I don't think I had to have this one. I'm gonna give that to a friend. The She's in Parties palette. This one's so cute. I love these plummy berry tones, especially during the winter. I don't know what it is, but this is so super cute. I think it's so pretty. All right, we have these little Zodiac palettes. I bought all four. I ended up decluttering the fire one last year just because it didn't blow my mind. I'll be honest, I don't even remember what these look like. Um, the Air palette. Okay, I do remember that this was the most exciting one. I liked kind of the peaches with the purple. It's pretty cool. Um, the water one, just a monochromatic kind of blue with some pops of neutral. And then the earth palette, yeah, kind of like the green, yellow, burgundy. Like I have this in the begonia palette, for instance. I don't think I need these either. I think these were also slightly a regret purchase just because, I don't know, it'd been a while since I bought something from Melt and then I got excited about this, this idea. These just aren't ones that I'm like running to use again unfortunately, so I'm gonna let these go. Who would have thought that I was gonna declutter four melt palettes? And then these two I actually got gifted from a friend who didn't want hers anymore. I didn't end up buying these when they first launched because I was dealing with 2020 nonsense and stuff like that back then. I was not prioritizing buying makeup. Um, but ever since she gifted these to me, I will keep these forever. It's getting a little crumbly, it's getting a little old but I will still keep it forever, even just for packaging purposes. I'm so grateful for this gift. And the recently deceased, if I can get it opened, there we go. Just fun Beetlejuice vibes. I think it's cute. I do wish these were more in their like standard rectangle packaging rather than that chunky packaging, but I still enjoy it. I have some sugar pill things. Um, first being the Oh Honey 2 palette from Trixie Mattel and Sugar Pill. I think this is fun. I actually really like the shades in here. I think they perform really well. I just don't really need this one. I, it's not one that I'm itching to use, so I'm gonna give that to a friend. I will, however, forever keep my fun size, super cute kind of pastel neons, and fun size too, the companion to the fun size. I don't even know if these are available anymore, but I love them and I'm gonna keep them. And then we have the capsule palettes. Oh my gosh, I hang on to these every time because like I loved this vibe when they were coming out with them, but I just don't really use these. And I mean, my pink one is broken. Like I broke a whole shade out of it. I actually broke two and then I accidentally put this one in the wrong spot. This is supposed to be over here. This is just a mess. I'm not compelled to reach for this, so I'm gonna let it go. The orange was the second one that came out. It looks like that. I just don't know how I feel. The black one came out third. This one is my favorite. If I'm gonna keep any, it's gonna be this one for sure. So let me go ahead and set that aside. And then this is the anniversary one. So we're kind of between these two. And I mean, they're good palettes. Like I enjoyed them. I wish they kind of would have kept coming out with them. But you know, I don't really need them. I'm not super drawn to them. The exciting one to me is the black one. So I think I'll let these all go. All right, Glaminatrix. I have a few palettes from them. Um, the U Beauty I bought forever ago when they first came out with it. I'm really scared to open this because it's very broken. Yeah, it kind of arrived shattered and then it just continued shattering. Um, 
It's beautiful, but it's one of those palettes that I'm kind of scared to use it because I don't want it to break more. And I haven't used this in a long time. So I think this one I just need to let go. Like I'm kind of just holding on to it because I think I feel like obligated since I bought it, but it, it doesn't bring me a lot of joy anymore, unfortunately. Let's go over this one next. This was actually the first palette I ever tried from the brand. This is the Sandra Rose and it's also getting kind of crumbly, kind of old. This was, this came out a long time ago. Like this palette does not exist anymore. And I also haven't used this one in a really, really, really long time. Like a really long time. I'm gonna let this one go too. And then I have these two newer palettes. We have the Sugar and Spice and the Rich Romantic. Sugar and Spice looks like this. We have a row of neutrals and then pops of like pastel and then some really pretty shimmers. The shimmers are honestly the saving grace in this palette. And then the Rich Romantic looks like this. I actually love this one. Like I'm 100% keeping this. I think it is so beautiful. I just think it's gorgeous and elegant and everything amazing. And I really like the Sugar and Spice in the sense that the formulas are really good. Like everything performs really well. I just won't use one third of this palette. I mean, maybe I would use the black, sure, but I don't care about like the two beiges. And like the shimmers that are in here aren't enough for me to want to keep it. So I think I'm just going to keep the one Rich Romantic. I have some Sigma palettes. I have two of these like little party on the go palettes, I think is what they were called. We have the, the electric pink and the beachy. Um, there were four of these. I only ended up using two of them. And even these, like, I mean, they perform good. I like Sigma's formulas. The mattes perform fine. These shimmers are very glossy. They have a good like shine to them. I just don't really care about these nine pans, so I'm gonna let them go. Ooh, the Sigma Angela Bright palette. I actually love this one. I think Angela did such a good job with this. I love the Taylor Swift references in here. Um, I love the different colors going on. Even though there are like some neutrals I don't personally wanna play with, there are some things that are really, really pretty, like Champagne Problems is a beautiful topper. Faye is a gorgeous green metallic. I like this like, Zinfandel, like there's some really cool shades in here and I, I appreciate it. I also really like the Cinderella palette. I think this one was really good. I really like these cool toned, kind of elegant, colorful, glamorous kind of vibes. I think this is a really pretty winter palette. I wanna keep this one too. And then the Alice in Wonderland palette. I remember liking this one when I used it, but I don't know. There's nothing like really drawing me in about this one. Like it's fine, it's cute but it's kind of just like a rainbow palette, you know? And I feel like I have better rainbow palettes. I didn't even really realize this was kind of just a rainbow palette because it really is. There's a red, orange, yellow, green, blue. There's not really a true purple, but there's like pink. I don't think I need this one. I've talked myself out of it. All right, ColourPop. I used to have so many more ColourPop palettes. I dwindled this down so much last year. Um, and here's where we are now. I, I don't know what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of, to be honest with you. All Amethyst. I do still think this one's really pretty. This one got some hate, but I personally really enjoyed it. Mm, possibly keeping. Of course, uh, if I'm gonna play with neutrals. I love these cool tone grazy neutrals. This one's really, really pretty. I think I will keep that one. Sprinkle a little magic. I still think that's a mouthful of a name <laughs> for this Tinkerbell palette. Oh, this one is still really cute though. Oh, I think I might keep that one. In the limelight though. This one's cute and it is very different in my opinion than the Tinkerbell one. I feel like this one has completely different tones and things going on, but I don't think I need this one. I'm not, a, I haven't really thought to use this one even once. Ooh, the Star Wars, the Child palette. This one's still like such an icon. <laughs> they did such a good job with this color story. I feel like I have no choice, I have to keep it. Oh, and that's taupe. This is one of my favorite neutral palettes. Like again, if I'm gonna play with neutrals, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This has the perfect range from light to dark, all these different shimmers. Oh yeah, this is a good one. The Lost in Wonderland palette. This one launched earlier this year and it's fine. Like it's cute. I think this is a fun color story. My problem with this though, is I don't like when the shimmers are the darkest shade. I mean, we have this shade here that has sparkle pressed into it. I wish it was just a typical matte. And really, I wish there was like a dark blue or a dark purple. I think that would have really added to this palette. I don't think I need this one. I will, however, be keeping the Nightmare Before Christmas palette. It's a early 2000s scene kid dream right here. This is so cute. I love this one. It's so very lovely. I kind of forgot about this one. It is really cute, but I almost feel like I have similar vibes in that Glamanatrix one. And I'll be honest, I'm probably more likely to reach for that Glamanatrix one. So I'm gonna let this one go. At Forest Sight, this is Robbie D. Christie's collab. And I still really like this. I think it's a really well done jewel tone situation. Really like the shimmers in here. 
I'm gonna keep it. Oh, the My Little Pony. I got this as a gift like a couple years ago because I missed out on it when it initially launched a million years ago. Like this was one of their first palettes they ever did. And I still just, I don't know. I'm holding on to this one for nostalgic purposes. Like I'm so thankful for this gift and I love the entity. Like I loved the classic ponies when I was a kid. So this one's cute. I'm gonna keep it just for funsies. The Rudolph palette. I am so in Christmas mode right now. And this palette still makes me smile. I think they re-released this collection this year. Um, and it's very cute. I have to keep it, it's very good. All right, the Avatar, the last Airbender palette looks like this. I still wish there was a brighter green in here. I feel like that would have made it better, which they did do that in the Cora palette. My problem with the Cora palette is there are things in here that I wanted to be in here, but there's things in here that I don't like at all. Like this is such a bad shade, it barely shows up. Oh, I don't know. It's like there are things in both palettes that just one of them would have been perfect if we picked the right shades. I don't know, I'm kind of over both of these. I'm really excited about the new show though, the live action, I hope it goes well. We'll see. The all am with this one, you know, it's cute, but I don't think I really need it. I can let this one go too. We only have Odin's Eye left and then just a random pile of like individual indie brands that didn't fit with anything else. So let's do the Odin's Eye ones. All right, I'm telling you right now, I'm keeping most of these. Um, the only thing I might get rid of are some of like the older palettes that they've done, but most of these I'm keeping. We have the three Angelica Odin's Eye palettes. This is the Trick or Treats from the Halloween collection. We have the Little Ghost from the Halloween collection. I love them both. We have the original Hella right here. It's so super pretty. Um, obviously keeping those. Uh, keeping the Christmas palettes. We have the Christmas Eve palette right here. This is my favorite of the Christmas palettes. This is my favorite Odin's Eye palette in general, aside from my own collab. Um, this is just amazing. We also have the Merry Christmas palette. This one is so pretty. We have the Snow Dream palette. This one's really, really cute. It's very quintessential holiday vibes. And then we have the Hey Reindeer. Very bright and colorful and amazing. And then we have these two. These ones are a little bit older. And it's not to say that these are bad. Like I loved them when they came out, but their formulas are just so much better now that it like doesn't make me want to use the old ones. Um, this is the Alva, kind of just like a romantic shimmery situation. And I definitely kept some things in my collection that have a similar vibe. So I don't need this one anymore. And then the Norns palette, I believe they just re-released like over the last few months in their newer formula. So I don't know, I'm tempted to buy that one. I do still think this is a really cool color story. Like I was really into it when I first got it, but I'm not really reaching for this one now. I think I can let this one go. And if I end up missing it bad enough, I'll buy the newly reformulated version. We have these book ones. We have the, the Saga of Freya ones. We have the actual like book Saga of Freya. It has the, the reddish lovey side and then the pumpkin patchy look inside. Um, it's kind of impractical to use, but I still really like this one, gotta be honest. Um, and then we have chapter one, Tears of Freya. I think this is such a pretty like romantic springy color story. It's so cute. And then this one's the chapter two, Cat with a Golden Carriage. Oh, that looks like my Felix. I miss him so bad. Um, but this is the inside here, kind of like a blue orange situation. Uh, very cute, very cute. We have the Legendary Diversa collaborations. Um, this is the Red Dragon in collaboration with Judy. This is so pretty. I still think this is gorgeous. Um, the Hummingbird with Tina from the Fancy Face. So pretty. I love these bright colors. The shimmers are unreal in here. And then the Giant Wolves palette with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. A grungy love this is amazing such a good color story oh the george divine collection i loved this collection so this is the jewels and gem so pretty i love this mauvey smoky vibe it's so cute and then also came out with the stone and rock oh i love these palettes these were such a great release from this year these are so good like honestly some of my favorite palettes they've ever done and then we also have the soul main two it looks like this very bright very colorful this one is so much fun i really enjoy this one too and then we have all these little palettes this is the mini sky this one i think i can also let go of i saved it last year from the declutter and i just i don't really think about this one so i'm gonna let this one go uh same with the schooled palette it's an all shimmer palette and remember what i was just saying about all shimmer palettes i'm just simply not that into it right now but these were really pretty like i loved them for a long time uh same with the urd the urd palette was a a great one this was my favorite palette from the brand for a long time but 
I don't know, they've just improved so much and I just don't really think about this one anymore. So I think it is time. And then this is the mini forest. This was also a top favorite from the brand for a while, but you know, you move on from things. And this one is just not one that I'm into anymore. And then we have the perfect world collaboration between me, Makeup Just For Fun, and Lauren May Beauty. This one's mine, my Planet Spirit palette. Just like a very bright, lively, punchy, fun vibe. I wanted something very different than my Shroud collabs. I wanted to play with my very color loving side rather than my grungy loving side. And I love how this came out and I love all the little animals. This is the Flora story from Makeup Just For Fun. Look how cute. I love what she did with this, this like muted garden, it's so pretty. And then we have Lauren May Beauty's Sea Talk palette. This one is a shimmery dream. Like if you're looking for a bunch of shimmers, there they are. It's so cute. And last, I just have a random assortment of like indie brands that I don't have multiples of from other brands. Oh, actually, I lied. I guess I have two from Cleona. I guess we'll just start here then. Um, this is the Deep Sea Treasures. And listen, I know I went on a rant about how I don't love all shimmer palettes, but I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna store this with my singles. It's still a palette, but I'm gonna store it with my singles because I can easily pluck these out for build your own palette videos. And Cleona multi-chromes are just unmatched. I can't get rid of these. And this is the dragon fruit palette between, uh, it, it's broken, <laughs> between Emily Violet Marie and uh, Cleona. And this one is really pretty. And I feel like this one to me isn't just a shimmer palette because there's like some satiny shades in here as well that you could kind of pretend are mattes. I don't know, there's something about this one. I can't really let this one go, so I'm gonna keep this one too. I have this Ladybug Glow palette. I don't remember what this is called. There isn't a name written on it, but this came out earlier this year and it's fine. I don't really have a major problem with it, but well, I guess my major problem is I don't feel like these shimmers suit the mattes at all, personally. I think they should have done something different with the shimmers or different with the mattes, like give us some more depth or something. It's not bad. I'm not mad at it, but I don't really need this one, so I'm gonna let this go. Ah, uh, the Midas and Smoky Glow collab. I save this every year. It's just so pretty. I'm still so excited about it. It's beautiful. <sighs> But you know what, guys? I think it's time to let this one go. I need to give it to a friend who's gonna use it more. I just don't reach for this one. I just, I don't know. It's not one that I'm grabbing for. This brand doesn't exist anymore. So not to say that I can't use things that don't exist, but in the world of YouTube, I, I need to use things that are at least a little bit more relevant. Um, so I'm gonna let this one go. I loved this one for so many years though, and I'm still so proud of her. Ooh, the Heather Austin palette from Adept. This is beautiful. This is my only Adept palette, and I'm still so happy with it. She killed it, I'm definitely keeping that. The Lavender one from Lawless. I could not care less about this palette, I'll be honest with you. It's just too subtle for me. Very light, very basic, very not my vibe. The Urban Myth from Black Moon. I think this one's still so fun. It's so unique and so weird. I really like the shimmers in here too. I wanna keep it. Ah, the Blueberry Muffin Palette from BH Cosmetics. I bought this. I think I've only used it once or twice and I loved it. I loved it so much. And I don't think to use this and I really wanna use it more because it's so cute. I'm gonna make it a mission to try to use this more. I'm gonna hopefully use this more. I'm gonna keep it. This is the Dev Rune Cosmetics who is owned by M. Jones who I mentioned earlier in that collab with Bella Beauty Bar. Um, this is the Moth and the Moon palette. This is beautiful. What a great first launch. I think they knocked it out of the park. These shimmers are insane and I'm just very impressed with it overall. Huge congrats to the brand. I have the Ofra and Ali Dawson Falling in Love palette. This is her recent collab. And this isn't really a brand I shop from. They're not really a brand that I care about, but I do care about Allie. She's one of my close friends and I am super happy for her and I will keep her collab because I love her. She's amazing. And honestly, the palette's really good too. That uh, highlighty shade in the middle makes a beautiful highlighter on your eyes or your face. Um, this is the Ugly Palette by Likely Makeup. And I love Jordy. I love her as a person. I love her brand. I wish that she would come out with more products. I wanna see more blush palettes specifically. Um, and this palette was really good. I think the mattes are intense and pigmented and the shimmers are nice, but it's really just not like one that I'm gravitating toward very much. There's just other things that I'm reaching for first. So I think I'm actually gonna let this one go. I didn't see that coming, I'll be honest with you, but I don't wanna hang on to things just for the sake of hanging on to them. And last but not least, we have the Cozy Cabin Holiday Edition from Simply Posh Cosmetics. My first time trying this brand and I'm so blown away. These formulas are amazing. These shimmers are everything. I really, really like this, so definitely gonna keep that. All right, I have to gather my thoughts now. 
I'm gonna get my totals together, figure out what I decluttered, and I will get back to you. All right, so all of that decluttering nonsense is over. <laughs> I started with 252 palettes. I decluttered 70 exactly, and now I have 182. So I got pretty close to my goal. I thought I wanted to be closer to like 175. So I did pretty good. I feel like I weeded out some things that I don't really care about anymore or things that I just don't see myself using. I'm a lot more aware of what I do own, and that makes me really happy. So here is the before picture of 252 palettes in stacks because I simply don't have enough space to put 252 palettes. Here are the 70 palettes that I decluttered, again, in stacks. And then here are the 182 things that I am keeping. I feel satisfied. I hope you enjoyed this feature length film. <laughs> Let's zoom out and finish this up. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate you being here and hanging out. I really hope you enjoyed it. I always get so nervous, but excited doing this video because it's kind of daunting, but it's also just so relieving for me to do. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you see any of your favorites in there? What are your current favorite eyeshadow palettes in your collection? How many do you have in your collection? I would love to know. If you made it to the end of this video, why don't you leave? You know, just leave your current favorite emojis. I feel like that sounds fun. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm Batty Bean there as well. And also feel free to subscribe. I'm posting most days over here. Also feel free to join my channel memberships. The link to sign up will be down below. You'll get fun little perks, including a members only video once a month. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.